My name is Philippe Signore. I'm a program manager at Microsoft in the identity division. And today I'm going to talk a bit about delegated permissions and application permissions in the Microsoft Identity Platform. This is indeed similar to a talk I gave for the MVP Summit. I changed things around just in case you'd already seen the MVP Summit one. And some things are a little bit different, but generally it's the same. So when we talk about applications, forget the title of the session, right? Application permissions, delegated permissions. Let's just talk about how applications and services actually access data. Uh, there are two ways we're going to talk about today in which an application or a service, I'll use those interchangeably, can access data at a service. And I, I, when I say access data, generally speaking, we're talking about an API request. Not necessarily REST, but usually some form of API. Right? The one simple way is direct access, also known as service to service. Uh, we sometimes refer to it in our documentation or on Stack Overflow answers as app-only access. And this is, it's very simple. There's a client application or service, which is the one on the left. And then we have a resource application or service, which is the one on the right. And the client application is accessing the, the resource service directly as itself. There's no user involved. It's saying, hi, I'm client. I'd like to do take this action at you. If the resource in this example would be Microsoft Graph, the client could be trying to create a user or reset a password or download a file. Um, and this is, so that's one form of access, direct access, pretty straightforward. The other form of access is access on behalf of a user, right? So we have a user involved. We also have an application involved. And um, the access that the application is taking, the client application is taking on the resource is done on behalf of that user. And so if you notice the little pentagons that I have there that represent the token, the one for direct access is identifying the application as the subject of the token. Whereas the one on the right, it's identifying the user as the subject of the token. And that's an important, that will be an important thing uh, in the next few slides. When it, we're talking about access on behalf of a user, we often just to, <laughs> to decode some of the terms we use, we sometimes refer to this as delegated access. Sometimes we call it appless user access. Um, very, in some cases I've heard in constrained impersonation or impersonation access. But all of these are access on behalf of a user. One important thing to call out here is that on the identity platform, this is always on behalf of a signed in user. So a user that at some point in time actually signed into the application, as opposed to arbitrary impersonation of any user who didn't actually sign in. Right, so these are the two forms of access that we're gonna be talking about. The, the, what I'm talking about here, I mention often the resource or the API. You can, of course, always imagine, think of Microsoft Graph as a good example of an API, but there's also the Azure Management APIs or APIs that you, de you develop. Uh, I'm laughing at the comments. Uh, direct access. So when we have direct access, again, just the client accessing the resource, the resource needs to make a decision in, for in terms of authorization. It's asking a very simple question. Is the app authorized to do this? A little bit more generally, is the subject of the token authorized to take this action, right? And on the identity platform, we offer a permit, a type of permission, or permissions for direct access, and we call them app roles. And when it turns out that app roles are granted to other applications, we just change the name and we call them application permissions. But app roles or application permissions for this conversation are interchangeable. And they're just a way of expressing authorization that is used for direct access. Now, one very important thing to keep in mind, in particular for direct access, is that there are actually many ways in which an application can be given authorization for direct access. Application permissions and app roles is just one of those ways. And it's, it's a very common way, for reasons we'll see in a bit, but many other ways are possible. For example, if you think, if you're familiar with how Azure does authorization for direct access for applications, there's no app role. There's an Azure RBAC role assignment, and it's granted to the service principal that represents the application in that tenant. But there's no consent for an app-only permission like there is for Microsoft Graph. So um, likewise, you can assign a directory role to an application, or you can make a service principal owner of a group or of another service principal, and that is giving it authorization to do things or make it a member of a group, etc. So always keep in mind that there are many different ways in which an application can be given authorization. And if you're building an API or others have built APIs, they could also just have a list internally that says, hey, these applications are allowed to take these actions. And that would be another form of authorization. But all of that is for direct access. 
When it comes to access on behalf of a user, authorization is a little bit different, but it's when, when you look at it, it's actually the same thing. There's just one extra question, right? The first question is very similar to the previous one is, is the user authorized to take this action? In the previous case for direct access, it was, is the app authorized to take this action? Now, again, the, the more general question being asked here is very simply, is the subject authorized to take this action? If the subject is a user, is, it a, is a user allowed? If the subject is an app, is the app allowed, right? And so we're always gonna ask that question. Is, is the person I, or the thing identified on the token authorized to take this action? But in the case of access on behalf of a user, there's a second question the resource always has to ask. And, is, and that question is, is the app allowed to take this action on behalf of the user, right? And the Microsoft Identity Platform offers delegated permissions to help answer that second question, right? Is the app authorized to do this on behalf of the user? It's delegated permissions have no say whatsoever in whether the user is allowed to take an action. Delegated permissions are only for expressing whether an app is allowed to do something on behalf of the user. Right? So it's always important to keep in mind that the user needs to be authorized and the app needs to be allowed to do what it's trying to do on behalf of the user. There are lots of ways to look at this. One way to explain it is sort of how I've done it now. Another fairly common way to explain it is to say, you can imagine everything the user can do. You can also imagine everything the app has been allowed to do on behalf of the user. And what the app can actually do is the intersection, right? It's the things the user can do and the app has been allowed to do on behalf of the user. So just to walk through an example real quick of this, here I'm using Microsoft Graph as the example API, but again, you can imagine this uh, being a different API. In the first case, we're trying to list users. We're doing a get for users. And as always, the first question, because these are all access on behalf of a user, is, is the user allowed to do this? And in the case of a guest user, which is this row and it happens to be a, the user signed in as a guest user, well, the answer is no, because guest users by default are not allowed to list all users. And so we would answer no immediately, and the resource, in this case, Microsoft Graph, would, would just stop there. It wouldn't even ask the second question. It'd say, no, user's not allowed, so I won't even check if the app. Now, in this case, it turns out that the app is allowed to take this action on behalf of the user but that's irrelevant because the user themselves can't do it, right? So the result for this request would actually be a, an authorization failure. The second example, the app, the user is a global administrator, but the user, the, and the app is trying to delete a user, right? Now, so again, the answer to the first question, is the user allowed to do this? Well, yep, global admins are allowed to delete users unless that user happened to be the global admin themselves, but let's assume that wasn't the case. The second question though, is can the app do it on behalf of the user? And in this example, because the app had only been granted the delegated permission directory read all, which does not include the permission to delete users, the answer here again is, well, no, you can't do it. The user is allowed, but the app is not. And that middle row is the reason why delegated permissions exist. That way you can have applications that privileged users are accessing, but the application cannot misuse users' privileges on different resources. And then the last case, because we have to have a case that actually works, uh, the application is just trying to get the signed in user's profile, so slash me, right? The user would be a regular member user, and the application has been granted the delegated permission user.read. Well, this one would succeed because users are allowed to read their own profiles, and the application has been specifically allowed to read the signed in user's profile on behalf of the signed in user. So now, we haven't talked so far about like, okay, great. We have direct access, access on behalf of a user. For direct access, we have application permissions. For uh, access on behalf of a user, we have delegated permissions. How does an application request them and how, does it get, how do they get granted? So one way app permissions can be requested by an application or by a developer who wrote the code so that the application would do it is during sign-in. And that's a very common approach. So if there's now, as soon as we say during sign-in, that means there's a user. And so we're usually talking about delegated access and delegated permissions. So an application can, during sign-in, can dynamically request a list of delegated permissions. And that's just part of the protocol, OpenID Connect in this case. We use the scope parameter where you can identify the resource. In this example, the resource would be widgets.example.com. 
and the delegated permission at that resource, right? So every resource registration, the app registration for an API or a resource, can define its list of delegated permissions and can define its list of app roles. So that's true for Microsoft Graph. There is an app registration for Microsoft Graph that has a list of all of the graph delegated permissions and all of the graph app roles or application permissions. And it's true of you can do that for your own APIs. In this example, the permission is read. If permissions that were requested dynamically are granted, they get granted in addition to anything that was granted previously. We call this incremental consent. This is useful so that users are only asked for what they need at the point in time in which the application needs it, right? Um, so basic permissions for sign-in, as you start moving forward, yes, new features are being used. Then at that point in time, the application requests the additional permissions. It helps for least privilege and it helps ensure some level of interaction with the user um, before they have to go find the person to, to grant the permissions. This flavor of requesting permission only works for delegated permissions. Then we have the statically configured permission list. So this, for those familiar in the Azure portal under app registrations, API permissions, you can choose a list of application permissions and delegated permissions. And these are the permissions that will be asked for if you if if the keyword dot default is used instead of a permission name, right? So in this example here, the request is for Microsoft Graph. So the the app is probably going to make a request an access on behalf of the signed in user to graph for whatever's configured. Um, now, granting permissions, that was how we, the application can request permissions. How do they get granted? So one, during the sign in, if the application requests access and access requested has not already been granted, the user may be prompted for consent. Now I say may be prompted because in many cases, the user will not be allowed to do that because every organization can have their own settings for user consent, and they'll decide whether non-admin users are allowed to consent uh, for delegated permissions on behalf of themselves. And they can take into account many variables, publisher verification status, uh, permission classifications, where the app was registered, et cetera. And generally speaking, they'll restrict this, or we want them to restrict this uh, as much as possible, and only make sure they only allow this for scenarios that are trustworthy. Right. For example, only for apps from verified publishers for certain permissions, basic permissions for signing. Microsoft will step in and block user consent, even if it would otherwise be allowed, for apps that we consider to be either risky or at least not trustworthy enough. So there are some cases, uh, depending on algorithms working behind the scenes, that will determine, hey, this, this situation is not, something doesn't look right, so we're not going to allow user consent. When a user is not allowed to consent for themselves, it's not the end of the world. They can always go request for admin review and approval, and there's a feature for that. You turn it on, if the user is not allowed to consent, they can click request admin approval and provide a justification, and then a workflow starts there. And so that takes us to admin consent, which is a very common way in which permissions are granted to applications. Through admin consent is, as the name implies, something that a privileged operation only can only be done by an admin or a sufficiently privileged user. It applies tenant-wide. So when we're consenting, for example, for delegated permissions, they're being granted on behalf of all users. And it also works now for application permissions. Admin consent can be triggered by the application itself. It can send the user off to the URL. Uh, it can be done from the Azure portal, or sometimes customers themselves will construct the URL and go there to, to grant admin consent. We could support both dynamic and incremental, what we mentioned, uh, dynamic and static, the two modes I mentioned earlier. And one thing to always keep in mind is a customer can always also manually grant access. You can, you can write a PowerShell script or call graph directly to create service principles, create app registrations, create app role assignments, so grant application permissions, or create delegated permission grants, so grant delegated permissions. Now, those of course are extremely privileged operations, especially if the application doing this, the automation granting permissions is not constrained in what permissions it can grant. So do keep that in mind that this can be done, but do be careful about in which situations this is used. So I put an empty slide because I didn't think I'd have time to get to the other slides, but am I out of time? Yeah, okay, unfortunately right. you are. Okay, yes, that's fine, yes. that's fine. I <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a, a great, great, great introduction and, and and we just need to be super strict on because of the other demos today as Absolutely. well. So 
So, and this is a great, great, great stuff to get uh, recorded and as a video uh, for YouTube as well. So, thank you, thank you, Philip, on that one. A lot of people clearly happy on the on the clarification. So, really, really great stuff. I think it's it's super important that we demystify the identity model because people are. I, I don't think people are educated enough, or maybe it's too complicatedly explained. But this was a good clarification how things are actually working. Great. Thank you.